you are now live. All right, take it away. Perfect, thank you. Okay, here. Good evening, everyone. Let's see, we have, it's Thursday, December 10th, 2020 at seven o'clock and you're attending the Historic District Commission meeting here in East Lansing. And um, we'll just start to move on through the agenda. Um, call to order. Jake, do you want to do a roll call? Commissioner Sousa. One second. Sometimes he pops in as a participant, so I got to double check that. Nope. Oh. All right. Sure. Uh, uh, Commissioner Sampson. Commissioner Hendricks. Commissioner Gray. Here. Commissioner Fox Brown. Here. Vice Chair Wing. Here. Chair Flores. Here. All right. You have a quorum. Okay. Wonderful. Um, approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Oh, okay. Well, did I have a, I was Session. shuffling here. Yeah. Did I have a motion by Commissioner Gray? Mm -hmm. Seconded by Commissioner Fox Brown? Yeah. All in, okay, perfect. And then do you want to, let's see, I see that Commissioner Sousa has joined us. Hi, Aaron. Sousa joins at 7.02. 2 p.m. From East Lansing. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I remember in Ingham right County. <laughs> okay, perfect. Good to see you. Um, okay, here. And then um, approval of the minutes from our last meeting on November 12th. Queen Order, I do approve the approval of the agenda. Um, we did, we had two motion, a motion by um, Commissioner Gray. Sorry, I think that I, that it um, showed that Aaron had joined our meeting and, and Commissioner Fox Brown had both um, put a motion and a seconded a motion all in favor of approving the agenda. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, perfect. How about um, approval of the agenda from our last meeting on November 12th? I move approval of the minutes. Okay. This is Commissioner okay. Wayne. Thank you, Diane. Perfect. Do I have a second? Okay. I have a motion by um, Vice Chair Wing, seconded by Commissioner Sousa to approve the minutes from the November 12th Historic District Commission meeting. Okay, perfect. Um, communications? Jake, is this where we open it up for public um, feedback? Yes. Uh, so first, I am going to share my screen. We had one email come in uh, regarding the um, solar panel application for 1025 Huntington uh, about 10 minutes before the meeting. So I'm going to leave it up here. Um, I'll do the, the two minute thing so everyone can have a chance to read it. Can everyone see my screen? Uh, all right. Uh -huh. All right. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll give you guys two minutes to read that and then I'll go into the audience. And there's a hey, second can you part. Make it, can you make it a tiny bit bigger? Is there any way you can vote, make it a little perfect? Yeah, there you go. For the record, this is from Eric Crawford from Huntington Road. Okay. Written communication. I'm going to scroll down for the first email right now. 
uh, for the record. Okay. There's two part email uh, received just about 10 minutes before the meeting. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, it's two minutes to share that written correspondence. I will now move into the audience. Um, I see everyone here has a name down on their attendee list. I will say your initials. You are then provided two minutes to speak. Uh, if you are an applicant uh, or wishing to speak specifically to one of the public hearings, uh, you will have an opportunity to do that. If you have nothing to say at this time as an attendee, you uh, may just uh, say pass. Uh, if you do have something to say, please state your name uh, and your address for our minutes. Starting with JL, attendee JL, the floor is yours. So yes, thank you. We're, we're the, uh, I, I am the applicant. This is our house. And, and what address is that for? 25 Huntington Road. Okay. Um, we worked with the uh, solar panel company to discuss options so that the two uh, roof lines or the uh, surfaces of the roofs that are directly facing Huntington and they're directly facing Kensington have no solar panels. Um, it is correct what uh, Eric Crawford says. If you drive down Huntington and you look, you will, you do see our how uh, the east side roof, but you have to be looking right at it. The, the, and the and the house houses right next to us uh, shield some of that view. Um, I think that that's a view that wouldn't necessarily be as obvious as the ones that we worked with the develop the solar panel people to avoid, which are the ones that directly face the street. Um, yeah. I, th I think that, uh, Joe, actually, you, you get a chance to talk when yeah. you get to the hearing itself. This is more okay. like general comment from the- Okay. Yep. okay. I didn't want to cut you off, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, and I'm happy to be cut off. Thank you. Yep. Uh, all right, caller with the initials KM. The floor is yours for two minutes. You are muted. Hi, um, I'm the applicant for Hillcrest Village. I'm the property manager, so. Thank you. I will yeah. uh, bring you back into the panelist uh, board when uh, your time's up for the application. Okay. Thank you. Um, RM, uh, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Ray Myers. I'm uh, with Michigan Solar Solutions, and I'm just here to help answer any questions during the uh, other part of this, if you guys have any questions that the homeowner cannot answer. Thank you very much. And finally, uh, TW, I recognize the name, but just for clarity's sake, the floor is yours. You are muted. Uh, go ahead, pass on that. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. All right, uh, that's all of your public comment. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Jake. Okay, um, any council liaison report? Council liaison is present. Perfect. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. And no, I don't have a report today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Dana, for attending. Okay, here. Um, public hearings. Okay. <clears throat> a public hearing will be held to consider a certificate of appropriateness from Hillcrest Village Limited Partnership for the properties at 540, 536, 532 Glenmore Road, 1317, 1321, 1325, 1329, 1259, 1255, 1251, 1245 West Grand River Avenue, and 1330, 1326, 1324, 1320, 1316, 1310, and 1300 Westview Avenue, also known as Hillcrest Village, to replace 
551 of the existing wood windows with vinyl windows and wrap the exterior trim with aluminum. Uh, yeah, okay. so I'll hop in real quick and give you a brief overview. Um, it's a really expansive six year project uh, to replace all of the windows pretty much uh, throughout this district. Hillcrest Village, although we have not had an application for it, I don't believe, is one of our historic districts on the furthest west point of town, uh, right up against Coolidge. Um, the windows here are a mix of vinyl and wood, um, uh, which leads me to believe and know that some are not original. This project would replace windows uh, on all of these addresses throughout the entire district uh, over that period of time. Uh, I am going to um, ask that Chair Flores opens the public hearing, and then I will bring Ms. Manasa on uh, to speak on it for her behalf. Okay, thanks, Jake. At this time, I can open the floor for public hearing, any kind of public comment related to the project at Hillcrest Village. Okay. Um, I know that most of the attendees here are applicants. What we'll ask at this time is if you can use the raise hand function. Um, oh, we got one call in listener uh, to say anything if you are an applicant. Uh, otherwise, I will go to the call in listener and then I'll briefly go back down the line and uh, we'll do this. So for the person who just called in, this is for public comment uh, for item 4A, comment regarding window replacement at Hillcrest Village. Caller with the last three digits of their phone number, 343, the floor is yours. You are muted to unmute on a phone, it is star six. Three, four, three, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, JL, the uh, floor is yours. JL. Okay. Uh, RM, the floor is yours if you have any comments. Thank you. Thank you. And TW, the floor is yours. No comment, thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I will allow the applicant to talk. Um, you're currently muted, um, but you can um, briefly go over your overview if you'd like in a little more detail, and then we'll have questions from the committee. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't have a lot to add that wasn't in the application. Um, we were given approval back in 1995 um, for five years to start replacing the windows. It looks like we did 115 um, and then we had to do roofs and some water heaters and we're not able to continue. Um, so those are the vinyl windows that I included a picture of um, that we replaced then. And we're not replacing any vinyl windows at this time. We're just replacing wood windows, um, which I think I saw in the application that it did say we were replacing some vinyl. So that is not correct. It'll just be the wood windows. Um, so they, yep, like you said, they'll be vinyl wrapped in aluminum. I'm gonna keep the same number of, of window panes and the same aesthetic. Um, there are, so for the six years, we'd be looking at doing about 91 per year. Um, and for the city inspection um, that we recently had this year, we were asked to paint um, several of the wood frames and also which would include a lot of reglazing. Um, and when I got quotes for this, it kind of it's it seemed like a lot of companies um, weren't willing to take on such a big job to scrape and paint all these windows and also to reglaze them. Um, so we'd like to move forward and just start replacing them with vinyl and be more energy efficient. So that's all I have. Questions from the commissioners? OK. 
okay, just a second here. I'm peeking at these photos. Jake, is there a sunset on, is there for if we give approval or conditional approval that they have to come back? What's the time frame? Was it just however long? It's 12 months. You have 12 months to complete the work unless you ask for an extension. Okay. In this instance, um, I would recommend maybe a condition just in your motion saying that we kind of check in annually. for the next period of time. Uh, this is obviously a project that can't be done in a year. Um, right. The resources would be significant. So I'm fine with them having extensions um, by just writing in if it's approved. That's what I was gonna ask as far as. Um, okay. So let me ask the applicant, the majority of the windows that are already replaced you had said that there's a number of them that have been replaced. Are those located at various places? Are they on the rear? Are they on the front? Because right now I only have two images, I believe, to go off of. Mm -hmm. Okay, so most of the ones that we replaced are in 1329 West Grand River, um, which is right on the corner of West Grand River and Glenmore Road. So kind of as you turn into our complex, uh, we replaced a number of those. And then also the building where our leasing office is located, which is 540 Glenmore Road. Um, But most of the ones that we did were along uh, West Grand River, um, along the front of the buildings that face West Grand River. So 1321 West Grand River, 1325 and 1329, uh, we replaced 21 windows in one of those, 22 windows in another, and then 40 windows in 1329, uh, 21 windows in 540. Okay. Um, I guess I'm just asking, I, I, am I the only one I only see one window image here? Um, did oh, you guess- get and? Here's yeah, the, I, I mean, I, think this, I believe this is the original window and then this is the replacement. And that's kind of what will be going on throughout the entire district. So they provided a before and after. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, I didn't really, I guess I didn't take photos of like a- For level of oh. condition. So we can uh-huh. see level of deterioration, existing conditions. Is Did you ever get a quote for a wood window uh, rehab specialist by chance to re- to see what the cost would be for rehabbing, like glazing and painting, um, weatherizing versus replacement? Um, the, I had a few companies that came out that weren't willing to take on that job. And so they did not provide a quote. They said that the reglazing, I mean, one of the guys told me that that's kind of a lost art. Um, they also have storm windows on them. So we'd have to we'd have to go in and remove all the storm windows um, and then scrape and paint. But I I do not have a quote for how much that would cost. Okay. Um, Just curious. It's it's typically significantly less. That's why. And there are people that specialize in this. I just wondered, I wish that in the nineties that someone had guided you to say, Hey, you know, don't replace these, get them rehabbed. It'll cost you a fraction, you know? Mm. Um, than having you go and put vinyl in that life is about 10 10 to 15 years a vinyl window. Um, Okay, I don't, it says also one quick question that you're gonna wrap the cells. Are you wrapping them in aluminum? What is the existing? Um, Is it just wood right now? It's all wood right now. And then yes, well, all sides said they would, it would be aluminum. Okay. Okay, I have no further questions unless any of my fellow commissioners have any questions. Would would anyone like to make a motion to approve the application as it is so we can open it up for discussion amongst the commission? Uh, this is this is Vice Chair Wing. Um, if I could ask, um, I, I'm only seeing one quote here from Wallside Windows. Did you did you get quotes from any other company 
other than wall side? No, we only got quotes from wall side. Thank you. So to the applicant, just as a just a, um, general comment, they're in the business of window replacement, not window rehabilitation. So just as a suggestion, I would always get three quotes moving forward on any building projects that you get. Mm -hmm. The suggestion is, as a recommendation, is to not get any less than three. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? Would anyone like to make a motion? We need a motion from someone to move forward. Um, hang on, uh, let's see here. This is simply uh, Aaron to just review it as a, have a discussion. I know. Um, so based on Secretary of Interior Standards five and six, I move approval. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Sousa. Would anyone like to second? I'll second, Lindsey Gray. Okay, seconded by Commissioner Gray. Um, to approve the application in conformance with the standards, um, five and six, the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehab, five and six. Now we can open it up for discussion amongst the commission. Okay. Let me peek here and open this up. I'm fairly concerned by a couple things. This is that I don't see any levels of deterioration on these windows. Um, I'm also concerned that you know, back in the 90s, the commission allowed that replacement of windows along West Graham River and Glenmore Avenue, one of the more prominent um, visibility, you know, uh, sites for the historic property. Um, it, it is very frustrating to me because wall sides in the business of of, of course, it's a dying art and in that they want to sell windows and not ever give a recommendation for rehabilitation that would save the applicant money. And so that's my very big concern here. We have windows that have lasted for, you know, over a half a century, they could last longer, but for rec you know, you know where I stand. Um, I went by here um, recently. I was actually running and I ran through this neighborhood. Um, so I was looking at the difference between the wood windows and the vinyl windows along Glenmore Avenue um, specifically. And you can tell with the wood windows that there is a lot of peeling paint. Um, I can't really speak to the true deterioration of them beyond um, the paint peeling, but you can see a stark contrast in quality between the vinyl and the wood windows. And it's my belief, my opinion, that the wood windows really make this um, group of buildings and the vinyl windows just completely uh, detract from the historic quality of this. Um, and I live very close to um, this location. Um, and 
for me living close to it, it, it really, um, I truly appreciate the historic quality of it. And I think that the windows are um, a very strong factor in that in maintaining um, either the wood windows or something that very well mimics the wood windows. I concur. I think that a little maintenance would make them look, you know, would make them solid and not make them shoddy. Um, I am concerned about water getting in just at a longevity point, water getting into the area of aluminum wrapping on the wood cell. To me, it's like a vehicle to accelerate deterioration, which I didn't mention to the applicant. I know you can hear me. <laughs> and just the aluminum it's, wrapping, it just, it gets so beat up so easily um, with any type of maintenance work that happens um, around it that I would be very concerned about the use of that also. <clears throat> right. Yeah, I, I understand the, the scale of this is large and that makes the expense um, feel um, more acute, but for other landlords and houses, we have been pretty good about holding up a standard of replacing like with like. I, I have some, I, I do understand it's difficult to find people to do this work. And, and I can imagine that there would be places, times and places when people can't. And in those cases, we've had people replace with like with like. And so I, I maybe a little less, uh, um, on the, we have to re rehab them all because I understand sometimes it's not possible to find people to do that, especially on a large scale. But in those cases, we've held people to replacing with like for like, and I think that's where I would remain. I agree with that. Agree, perhaps those that are too far gone, you know, would but recommend like for like. My concern too is that the level of um, replacement window that's being proposed is, uh, in my opinion, far below um, the type of window that we have approved for replacement. Um, so I'm just not crazy about the actual window that's being proposed. I would agree with Commissioner Gray on that. And this is uh, Vice Chair Wing. I certainly understand the applicant's need to consider cost. Um, certainly they're talking about 551 windows. That's a not an um, unsubstantial or insubstantial number of windows to replace. Um, but as Commissioner Gray pointed out, um, the, the quality of the windows that are being proposed here are far below any quality that we've, that we've ever had presented in front of us in my time, at least. Um, there's, um, well, I, I personally feel that if the applicant were to bring forward a higher quality of window, that perhaps there might be um, more openness on part of the commission to um, uh, you know to, to approve this, if you will. And again, still I still under, I do understand that cost has got to be a factor in this. But um, that, that's why I asked whether there had been another another quote provided by another company. For, for window replacement, not for rehab. Right. So um, again, this is Vice Chair Wing. I will be voting against this um, with, with the caveat that um, I would encourage, uh, you know, depending on how the vote goes, obviously, but my concern is that the applicant needs to um, work with a higher quality of replacement window company um, and potentially come back with um, a different proposal with a different level of windows. Right, I don't, I agree with um, Vice Chair Wig. I would like to give some strategies or some alternatives and not leave the applicant uncertain of their next um, 
move. So we right. can give them. Yep. Okay. Is there any more discussion that we want to have about the application? Would anyone like to make a motion? There's a motion. We have a, there's a motion on oh, the table. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So, Jake, do you want to do a roll call? I will. Uh, point of order. Motion. Wait, point of oh. order. Am I allowed to vote against my motion? I thought I, thought so. I wasn't, but I'm not sure. Oh. Um, this kid has come up with us before. <laughs> um, I thought you Meg, could. Jake? Okay. What? It doesn't matter too much. Jessica, okay. what did you say? Was it an amendment to the existing? Can he do that motion? No, I think we just no. have to decide whether. I mean, presumably there'll be enough votes that it won't matter. And, yeah. So. Um, I'm okay. You can vote against it also because you know it was brought up so you guys could discuss it. So then it's possible your mind could change or someone could think differently. So I think I've seen it done before. Okay. All right. Thank you, Council Member Watson. Um, okay, so this is a motion uh, from Commissioner Sousa, seconded by Commissioner Gray, uh, to approve the application to replace 551 windows in the Hillcrest Village Historic District in East Lansing. Uh, a vote of yes is a vote in favor of approval. A vote of no is a vote um, against the application on this motion. Uh, Commissioner Sousa. No. Uh, Commissioner Gray? No. Commissioner Fox Brown? Commissioner Fox Brown? No. Thank you. Vice Chair Wing? No. Chair Flores? No. Okay. Um, Ms. Manasa, you have uh, 60 days to resubmit the application. Uh, under this current application and be reheard in front of this board. Um, I will follow up with you tomorrow uh, and we can hopefully maybe even schedule a meeting with the chair and vice chair if they're willing. Uh, we'll work with you to, to find a solution for this and we will uh, move forward from there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jake, sorry about that. I was going through down into her throughout this application. Okay. A public hearing will be held to consider a certificate of appropriateness from Stephen Thomas for the property at 1025 Huntington Road to install 17 solar panels to the existing home and garage. All right. Uh, so here is our first solar panel application. Uh, as many as you remember, I think everyone was on the board or just getting onto the board when we worked through the application. Uh, last year, we added a section in our preservation guidelines allowing for solar panels to be constructed in our historic districts on the roofs of homes. I will share the preservation guidelines speaking to that after the public hearing. Uh, but the applicant here is looking to add 17 solar panels to the roof of the house. Uh, it's on a corner of Huntington and Kensington. Uh, it's going to be on the south and east side of the roofs, which are the two interior lot lines of the house on the main structure. The north and west are what are most exposed from the two roads. Um, so they're making an effort to put them on the uh, non-road facing roof lines. And, and Jake, I'm, I'm sorry, Jake, this is Diane. Actually, it's, they're putting them on the south and west sides of the house. South and west. Sorry, um, yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, they have a uh, the only ones that will be facing the road um, will be on the uh, – on the garage. I, I believe it is the south and east. Uh, I have a photo here I'll show in a minute, but um, I'm going to uh, ask that we open the public hearing and then I will bring the applicant in and we can go from there. So if you are calling in to speak on this application, um, I will 
um, allow you to talk for two minutes. This is for 1025 Huntington. I will either say the last three digits of your phone number or your initials. Um, Mr. Lonstein and Mr. Myers, I will skip you in this because you're the applicants and I'll just pull you in uh, to answer questions after the public hearing. So call her with the last three digits, three, four, three. Uh, the floor is yours for two minutes. You are muted. Can you hear me? Hello. I can. Uh, please just state oh your name God. for the record. Uh, Jenny Petrit. All right. And if you have a comment about this application, uh, you have two minutes. Yes, we are the neighbors that will probably be most affected by the placement of the solar panels as we are on, I'm guessing it's the south side of there. We're on Kensington, but their garage side of their home. And um, we are very much in favor. I don't know if anybody else has come down that charming street. Their house is probably one of the most meticulously manicured home um, to our neighborhood. And I feel they've been very mindful to keep the integrity of the neighborhood and in mind in everything that they've done for their yard and for their home. And I, um, if you were to look further down in Kensington, there is a home that I think it's been there 40 years. They've put in some type of solar panels and we're kind of the pioneers of, of that energy source in, um, as they were both, I think, professors at Michigan State. And it, it far more is an eyesore than what we have modern day move towards for solar panels. And I think that the proposal they have put in place has really kept in mind the integrity of the historical district. And I think we are very seconds. much in favor um, for their, their consciousness and their environmental impact that they have planned before you. So we're in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last three digits, 666. You have two minutes to speak. Uh, no. You are muted. This is for 1025 Huntington. Caller 666. One more time, 666. Okay. And caller uh, or attendee with the initials TW, the floor is yours. Well said, Jake, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I am going to bring in uh, the applicant and I am going to share my screen. Uh, mm -hmm. Before we get into questions from the applicant, here's the diagram showing where they'll go. Um, this is the east side where my cursor is, and then this is the south. So they'll be on the south and the east for the house, and then on the west and the south for the garage. Uh, but I defer to the applicant and the representative and the commission for their questions. Okay. Yeah, so this is Ray Myers. I guess one thing I want to point out um, looks like the size of the project has been amended to 15 panels because that's what I'm counting here in this picture. Uh, yeah, this is what was provided. 15. Yeah, in the, in, the, in the earlier section it had said 17, so I just wanted to um, make that correct. Thank you. Let's see here. Yep. Do you folks have any uh, questions specifically relating to these? I'm just going through the application here just to take another peek at the footings. So how it, it, it looks like it's screws on and then it's how high I'm looking at this diagram. Six inches. The footings are. Yeah, about six inches off the, uh, off okay. the face of the roof parallel to okay, the Okay, perfect. Um, on the screen here, uh, number 20 uh, is what we have passed as our um, ordinance for solar panels in historic um, neighborhoods. 
uh, with the three A, B, and C kind of regulating um, parts of the code. Move approval. Second. Okay. I didn't hear who came from the, the second. Second, Marcella. Commissioner okay. Fox Brown. Thank I'm, you. Th this is this is Vice Chair Wing. I have questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't realize we were closing the questions already. Um, okay. Can, can, can Ms. Mr. Myers, can you tell us about um, if somebody were to install these panels and then want to remove them later, what's the process for removing them? How, how, and how much, how much damage is done to the roofing structure as, the, as part of the insulate, installation? Sure, and there's, are you referring to, they would be removed for a permanent removal or be removed for a um, roof upgrade and reinstalled or removed in an upgraded solar panel installed? Um, a, a permanent removal. So this is just a hypothetical question that, that if somebody else were to purchase the house and wanted to take the panels off, what, what would that entail? And, and then what would the roof look like, if, if you will, once they would be taken off? Sure. So there's there's flashings built around everything, and the um, penetration to the roof is um, going to be over the area of where the rafters or trusses are located. So the um, as far as going into the actual home itself, very minimal. Um, you would need some sort of sealant, and then you would also need some replacement shingles to cover up the uh, the areas where the mounting structure was previously located and that's about it. And then I, I also noticed and I, I don't have a I don't have a packet up in front of me right now. I'm probably not going to be able to scroll to it quickly enough. Um, that in addition to the panels that there's some type of um, I don't know conductor of some sort that goes with them. Yeah, so there's for for the any system to work, you need um the panels to gather the sunlight, make the DC energy, and you need an inverter to turn it to usable energy for the home. Um, that inverter we're looking at also has been updated within the project. Um, so what we're actually that is one of the inverters that we would uh, use in some projects, but we're actually going to be going with an end phase product. And the difference between that is the thing that you're looking at right there would mounts. Um, mount on like be a wall mounted thing where the um, thing we're actually going to be using is mounted behind the panel and it looks a lot closer if you can scroll to the picture of the power optimizers uh, I can look right there these yep All right. yeah it looks it looks looks much more akin to that and sits behind the panels much like this power optimizer would so nothing else is going to be displayed um, anywhere on the property as far as what needs to be hooked up to run the system. Okay, so as far as so far as sight lines are concerned, the only thing that a passerby or a neighbor would see would be the panels themselves. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Those are the only questions I had. Thank you. Are there any additional questions for the applicant right now? I have one additional question. Um, this is Commissioner Gray. I was wondering um, what types of uh, considerations you made in the placement of the panels. For instance, I guess I'm wondering why um, on the home portion of the project, the panels are on the east side, but then on the garage, the panels are on the west side being visible from the street. I, I, I could comment on that. Thank you for this consideration. We actually originally had talked with the uh, provider about having panels on the west side. And um, Mr. Thomas and I decided that for the sake of the integrity of the way it would look from the street, we asked the provider of the panels to remove the three panels that, we, that he had originally proposed on the west side of, that, of our home. Uh, because we thought it would be less appealing uh, to have them facing Kensington. 
So that's why we had them removed. And in fact, that was a, a loss, a small loss of the energy efficiency that was possible for this home with those panels by removing those three. And I'm wondering with um, relating to the placement of the panels on the garage, um, why exactly was the decision made to have the panels facing the street as opposed to um, uh, facing uh, east? Right. There's, there's a tree, uh, you can probably see the, our neighbor to immediately to the east of us has a tree in their yard that blocks part of that uh, roof line or the roof facing east. And we were still trying to capture as much west facing sun as possible by having at least those three on the west side of the garage. Okay, I'm just, I'm looking at the shadow lines on this aerial yeah. photo and it looks like right. there's still um, sun exposure on that mm -hmm. west side, or I'm sorry, on the east side um, of the garage roof. So I guess that's okay. really, that observation was what prompted me to sure. question Can I, that. Can I comment on that really quick? Mm -hmm. So the, the shadow we're looking at here is a shadow at a specific time of the year. It looks to me that it is going to be late fall because all of the leaves have fallen off most of the other trees. In the summertime, those um, shadows are going to be based a lot more. You're going to see them um, a lot more like southerly based, but then also during the time of day um, in which it's going to impact it is also significant since this is made at a certain time, this picture. It doesn't capture the, the actual shadow from the early morning sun rising. And basically that entire side of the roof is probably covered in shadow in the uh, morning hours. So for a good 30% of the collection period for the panels, if they were on that side of the roof, they would probably be, be covered by, uh, by a shadow that's not really exist in that picture right now. Um, so I guess my follow-up to that would um, be, so, um, you removed two panels from um, the west side of the house. Yeah, three, three, three yeah. panels. Mm -hmm. um, so wondering um, what type of additional reduction in energy collection would occur if the three on the garage were either eliminated or um, um, placed on that uh, east side of the garage roof. Yeah, it would be pretty significant. Um, that would be 20% of the panels being, uh, you know, subjected to um, conditions that we, they're not going to optim, you know, fully be optimized or work. So essentially, the value that he'd be getting out of those would be would be far less than you know what what he would probably have thought about when he was originally making the decision to get the panels in the first place. It's going to decrease the output of those panels significantly. Okay. And, and that would be 20% of the entire system. So that's a, it would, I would call that a significant uh, decrease in output. Okay. And then, sorry, I'm sorry to bombard you with questions. Um, no, that's all right. These are great questions. I think my, my, my last question, at least I think it's my last question is, um, how was the quantity of panels determined? Was it by, um, energy uh, demand in the home, or was it by roof availability? So both both of those are, are factors. Um, when considering solar, your um, the utility company, when you're doing an interconnection, will not allow you to create more than 100% of what your home uses. So that is the that's the ceiling for what you're allowed allowed to put up and interconnect with the utility. And then the other real ceiling would be what do you have for you know, roof space, you know, your real estate available. And then obviously considerate the considerations that have to be made for the historical district on top of that. So there'd be, you know, kind of three levels deep of consideration there, but starting with what do you need to actually power your home? So would, um, so where does the quantity of panels um, that are being proposed fall within that range of the amount of power needed for this specific home? Let me see if I can pull something up really quick with the number. Yeah, what's being proposed is not 100% of the usage, partly because we had uh, asked them to not put the panels on the west side of the main roof. 
Okay. So, got it. so we're, we're not at 100% uh, with this plan. Great. Okay. Thank you. That's perfect. This is Thanks. kind of a leather, a later question I have really quickly for the applicant. Is the garage, what is the date of the garage? Is it a historic? I can't recall that garage, what it looks like. And I don't know if we have any photos, but is it a later build we, or? We don't, we don't know. We moved here, we moved into this house um, 10 years ago. We don't know when the garage was put in. We know uh, it looks like that the back patio and there's some fencing that does not look like it's from 1940. But I don't know if the garage was from 1940 or later. It looks like an addition. It's up on the screen, Jessica. I'm looking at it. I know. I mean, I was just trying to look at it on, oh, I'm in my PDF. I'm sorry. Looking at everything. Let me peek at it. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Jake. I was deep in looking at it because it's larger on my screen. Yeah. So that like an ancillary later build, I'm not as just sharing my, I'm not as, um, restrictive or concerned about in the ancillary garage as I would be about the home that I feel like this is reversible should like commissioner um, rice chair wing was talking about um, the, the factor of reversibility. So, okay. Do we have any further questions? I, I would just like to comment just quickly that uh, although it is indeed a consideration, I would think that whoever purchase this home in the future would uh, very much like their electricity bill to be less as well. So I, I think the likelihood of them being taken down and not replaced or upgraded um, is probably very low. And, and, and this is uh, Vice Chair Wing, just to clarify the reason for my asking that question. One of, one of the um, tenets of, uh, of changes to a home is, is whether it can be reversed. Um, Perfect. Of, of any type of change to a home is, can it be reversed? Um, so I have to ask it hypothetically, right? If Understood. Somebody, yep. If somebody wanted to take the panels off, could they take them off and how much of a, of a uh, repair work would they have to do on it? Um, and, and I, uh, Chair Flores, I do have another question. The, mm -hmm. the um, aerial view rendering, I'm here. Um, placement of the panels that that appears to be like um, just a, like a simple Photoshop, right? Like a cut and paste of of the panels, you know, put on top of the the roof. Um, I'm, I'm not concerned about this, but I, I want to make sure I ask the question that none of the panels will encroach on any of the roof lines. So Correct. We, so like not right. covering up any ridges. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm done with my questions. Thanks. Keep them coming, guys. These are great. This is very helpful for us too. You're our first real solar panel application. So. Right. Perfect. Okay. I don't do we I don't think we have any further questions. So would anyone like to make a motion? I already did. I oh, I'm sorry. I already seconded. Okay. Yep. Oh, you already seconded? Okay. <laughs> okay, so I have we... a motion by Commissioner Sousa, seconded by Commissioner Fox Brown to approve the application. Yes. We can now open up for discussion if we'd like to as a commission. Uh, this is Vice Chair Wing. I think the applicants have done a very thoughtful job at laying out these solar panels. Um, especially taking the panels off of the west side of the house, not the, not the west side of the garage, I apologize, taking the panels off of the west side of the house. Um, also, none of the panels will be visible from the front of the home, being the, um, the there's a porch and a fireplace that is the front of the house that's sort of, it's, it's cattywampus on that corner. Um, so, so I'm, I'm very pleased with this application and the thought that's gone into it by the applicants and by the um, by the company that's put the proposal together. Yes, they're very informed. Yeah. I, I I think that uh, solar panels actually should count as temporary structures like storm windows, 
um, which we don't actually have to put through the, um, the historic district um, because you can just take them off. It doesn't change the structure of the building. So um, I, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll be happy to vote for this, but I actually don't think it in general, I know our ordinance puts these before us, but I don't, I don't think it needs to. Right. I mean, I, I would say that if we had a less thoughtful application, we would absolutely want to see that particular application. We're just being presented one that's, that's been put together very, um, very logically. Yeah. From the HDC perspective. It's been, Diane, it can get pretty ugly. Yes, yeah, it could get ugly, but this is a really good application, I think. It's very nice. Okay, perfect. Jake, do you want to do a roll call? Love to. All right, so we have a motion from Commissioner Sousa, seconded by Commissioner Fox Brown. This is to approve the application to add uh, 15 solar panels to 1025 Huntington uh, placed uh, as shown on the diagram provided. All those, or a vote, in, vote for yes is a vote in the affirmative to approve the application. Um, so all those in favor, Commissioner Sousa? Yes. Commissioner uh, Gray? Yeah. Commissioner Fox Brown? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Wing? Yes. Chair Flores? Yes. All right. Uh, wonderful. Um, thank you very much uh, to our applicants. Uh, I appreciate the knowledge that you gave us and your time uh, joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys thank allowing you. me the opportunity to present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, moving right along here, a public hearing will be held to consider a certificate of appropriateness from Tom and Marcy Welburn for the property at 325 Linden Street to replace existing wood siding with vinyl siding. Okay, uh, this application is to replace uh, the existing uh, siding on the house. Um, to allow for more thermal comfort and weatherability. Uh, there's original wood siding on uh, the structure currently, uh, but right before we hop in, I'll just uh, say we should go into the public hearing and then uh, I can share the screen. So there are uh, four people um, who are, or, uh, there is one person in the audience currently, uh, other than Mr. Myers, who is the applicant himself. So I'm just gonna bring in Mr. Welburn and I'm going to share my screen there. All right. So uh, Mr. Welburn, you can unmute yourself. Um, you can answer questions from the commission if they arise and um, yeah, we can move forward with discussion. Okay, thanks Jake. Um, as, as is stated in our uh, request, uh, Marcy and I are looking to uh, replace the wood siding on uh, 325 Linden with uh, vinyl. Um, we've owned that property as a rental property for nearly 20 years. Um, it's one of two rental properties we, we own in East Lansing. Um, our intent is to uh, basically clean up the outside appearance of the house uh, with a new vinyl. Uh, that would obviously have the uh, uh, the wood texture to it still. We are not asking in any way to change the uh, structural look uh, as we would still go with the white and the dark brown trim. Um, uh, curb appeal would be basically the same as what it is right now. Um, as stated in, in the application, uh, we're looking to uh, gain a little bit more Energy efficiency, as I believe all of you are fully aware of, um, slightly uh, more efficient, especially if it's insulated, which we would be putting an insulated vinyl on this than the wood. Um, we're also uh, very interested in money. I did have three um, estimates. Uh, the current one that we most likely will go with uh, is the impact, impact remodeling. We also had streamline. We had uh, exterior philanthropy too. Um, they're all basically in the same ballpark. Uh, vinyl is approximately $7,000 less, seven to $10,000 less than wood. And wood is approximately seven to $10,000 less than attorney board. So um, there's a significant savings in going with the vinyl uh, on our part. Uh, also, again, with the 
um, uh, economics of it, it uh, would save the occupants a, a, a little bit in their utility uh, bills throughout each month and throughout the year. Uh, we're also looking for a little bit more of a um, uh, longevity as far as uh, practically 50 years is what I've read for vinyl to be uh, valuable and still uh, intact. Um, I know over the course of the 20 years that we've owned the house, we've, we've painted it, repainted it um, approximately every four to five years at a cost of approximately $4,000 per uh, paint job. So we're into the sixteen dollars to $20,000 just on paint alone, which would almost cover the cost of the vinyl replacement. So uh, that's where we're at. Um, I guess that uh, we're just requesting uh, your consideration. So thank you very much. Okay, let's see here. So I have some questions for the applicant. I have one image of the property and I don't have any levels of deterioration. So that's concerning to me, okay? I have no bids for rehabilitation for wood to look at, to scrape and paint your clabbered siding. Okay, if you, this side? am I back on or not? Yeah, yes. I am. Oh okay. yeah. There, the, you see the sun porch there on the uh, right hand side. If you go around the back corner of that, uh, this is what, what actually uh, sparked me into, hey, we've got a problem here. There's a chunk of that, uh, that wood uh, skirt board that goes around the base where the, the brick meets the, uh, the structure. Um, there's about a 12 to 18 inch piece of wood that is being, um, was being uh, attacked by uh, carpenter ants. And if you see along that, actually that back corner, which is not, you can't see it in the picture, but it's in that back corner again, um, there is a, a lot of deterioration as the uh, the roof uh, dripping down on the uh, sunroom coming down the side of the house uh, has rotted out uh, the majority of the wood coming from the second floor down to the, uh, the, the sill plate again. So, um, and if you do get close to the house, this isn't a good picture to show. It does have significant uh, damage on all four sides uh, as far as old wood that needs to be replaced, cracked and rotting. Okay, thank you for that clarification. So the, ha the wood clabbered siding, has it ever been replaced before? Uh, not it's to my knowledge. Original? Like, like I say, Marcy and I, we bought the house about 20 years ago. I think it's a 19... 20s or 30s build. Um, I could imagine that it's original, but I'm not, I don't know for sure. I know that when we did buy it though, uh, things I've done to it is I replaced the, the aluminum replacement windows with uh, wood double hungs and that was through the commission. And then uh, I also replaced that roof on that thing too. So Great. those are the parts I have I believe... replacement. Great. Sounds like you've been follow, you know, doing the right things for the longevity of the house. Um, so the siding looks to be original. I don't live too far from this house. And so it's a 1925 build. It's 95 years old. So you know what I'm going to say? You're it can last another. Yes, uh -huh. go ahead. Go it ahead. can last another. It can last another 95 years if you scrape and paint your wood clabbered siding. I'm just gonna be brutally honest here. It sounds like we need to address the water coming down from the downspout on the second floor to the rear behind the sun porch because that's accelerating water deterioration and making your wood soft and um, kind of putty-like. And it's much more environmentally friendly thinking of long-term and energy efficiency to not put vinyl on this home. So I'm 100% opposed to this. I'm 100% opposed to you continuing the longevity of the home and not putting vinyl on this, not putting vinyl in 15, 50 years, what have you into a landfill into rehabilitating the wood siding. You put the wood windows in, you replace the roof, you're doing the right thing. It's a great looking home. And so I'm a big no vote on this. 
that can you can't be- put band-aid you can't put a band-aid on the skirt board area you've got to address the water it's going to further deteriorate do we have any additional questions for the applicant None for me. Motion would be okay. Perfect. Would anyone like to make a motion? Motion to deny. Second. Okay. I have a motion by Commissioner Fox Brown and seconded by Commissioner Sousa to deny the placement of vinyl siding against the wood clapboard sided house. Would we like to open it up for comments amongst the commissioners? Uh, my view is that um, this is one of those cases where we would ask people to replace like with like. We do have a few other options of things that we think will last well when that's not an option, but this seems like um, repair with of the current wood would be uh, for the best. I, I think that there is a real environmental case to be made for avoiding vinyl, um, polyvinyl, uh, mono vinyl chloride, which is involved in the creation of vinyl is a fairly specific um, carcinogen, which is bad for the workers and, um, I think that we shouldn't be using vinyl and, and uh, for environmental reasons. And I also think within our historic construct, it's not consistent with the Secretary of Interior uh, standards. Uh, the one comment I would make is that it's much less expensive. Even though it has a maintenance, you have to maybe address it every three to four years. It's much less expensive than vinyl. I'd hate to see that beautiful hem covered up in vinyl. And I'll uh, go to what you were saying, Chair Flores, about um, the absolute need to get to the root causes of the water damage on the wood, um, as opposed to leaving those in place and just replacing uh, the symptom of the cause. Are there any further discussion points we wanna make? Okay. Jake, do you wanna do a roll call? I will. Uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Fox Brown, seconded by Commissioner Sousa to deny the application for vinyl siding on the home at 325 Linden. A vote yes in this instance is to deny the application. Commissioner Sousa? Yes. Commissioner Gray? Yes. Commissioner Fox Brown? Yes. Vice Chair Wing? Yes. Chair Flores? Yes. Okay, Mr. Walburn, uh, you will have 60 days to resubmit the application either with an alternative material or with a new um, type of uh, proposal. Um, reminder, if you do repair work uh, in the stead of that or keep wood for wood and rehabilitate, you will not need to come back to the commission. That can be done administratively. I will reach out to you tomorrow uh, to set a course of action for you. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me go back up through here just a minute. Okay, old business, review of the HDC guidelines. Jake, do we wanna talk about old business? Um, yeah, there's not, there has not been a ton of uh, movement. Um, we lost some time uh, moving to a work from home um, in the last month. So I have these, um, I, I know everyone wants to review them in piecemeal, but I don't know if who wants what. So I can sign out a correspondence for that unless anyone has any pressing discussion about it, but this meeting in this time of the year 
given everything going on is is a lot okay. I know for people to handle personally to take on the responsibility of reviewing. So um, I'm no, open to do whatever you want me to. No problem. If you would like for us to come back in January with some ideas, you know, I just don't want to continue to table. Yeah. I want to try to do some kind of make some traction. So if you say, give us a certain amount of pages to review, um, maybe that is better at kind of instead of piecemealing sections, maybe yeah. we just knock out a section together and just to make some, a little bit of traction. Yeah, I can do that. I can Is that easy out. on your part though? Cause I don't want to. Um... Oh, yep. I'm fully functional from my home all in one office now. So I can send anything over. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much, Jake. Mm -hmm. um, okay. New business. I see that we have set the 2021 meeting dates. Yes. Uh, let me share my screen here. Um, that's not it. I know it's way at the bottom of the um, packet. Yeah, I had it pulled up, I thought. Um, give me one second. So there's <laughs> two issues with what I had shared. Um, one is that they're all generally the same second Thursday, but I got one date wrong um, going through the, the thing. So January's would be the 14th um, of January. Uh, other than that, the other one is November 11th is um, a day we have off. Uh, I believe it's Veterans Day. So right. we would have to have an alternative meeting date um, for... Uh, November, but every other one can be the second Thursday. We just have a holiday on that day. So we can lock that in now if you want to do the first or the third November, and then I can run it up or try and do a different day that week, but I, then I can run it up the flagpole here at City Hall. Are we, are we... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say I don't have I don't have a preference if we move it to the first or the third Thursday okay. of November. It doesn't matter. Well, actually, maybe we should move it to the first because if we put it to the third, that's pretty Thursday close to November. December. Then we're going to be getting close to Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, you're right. Um. Yeah, and the third is Housing Commission. Okay. Yeah. Generally, we're the only um, meeting on. Thursdays. So we can do uh, it, the motion then would be to do the second Thursday uh, for every month and the first Thursday for November if these meeting times and dates work for you, which is what we're generally used to. I'm fine with it, Jake, and I'll adjust. Okay. And then so um, in the open meetings um, seminar, or whatever it was called, that we attended. Um, it was mentioned that all meetings um, starting in January 2021 were absolutely to be in person. Are there, is there now an amendment to that? I haven't heard anything from anyone about the plan for moving on digital meetings past this one. Okay. Um, I will reach out and I will see what I can pull up. Okay, so as far as you know, the plan is for all commission meetings to be in person starting in January, correct? Uh, I think that internally the dialogue has been we're a little, we're not thinking we're going to have an in-person meeting for a while. Um, mm -hmm. The facilities to do so I'll have to verify with uh, David Haywood and then I will report back to everybody. But okay. I thought it was kind of an indefinite virtual meeting. Um, yeah, well, that's what I thought was so interesting about that seminar is that it was like seemed very unequivocal that yeah. all yeah, in-person had... meetings, there no no remote meetings would be valid if they were remote. Yeah, I had an obligation <laughs> that night, so I wasn't able to attend, but then no one has brought anything up. Um, so I will email uh, Tom Fehrenbach and David Haywood right after this meeting, and I will report back. All righty. Thanks for bringing that up. Thanks, Jake. 
Okay. Yeah, we would need a motion on this to lock in the dates again. Oh. Would anyone like to make a motion? Uh, Vice Chair Wing uh, moves to approve the meeting dates for 2021 with the exception of November. November will be held on the first Thursday of the month. Commissioner Gray, second. Okay. Okay, perfect. A motion by Vice Chair Wing, seconded by Commissioner Gray to move the, to approve the 2021 meeting dates, except for November, which will be moved to the first Thursday of the month. Um, I can do a roll call. Uh, Commissioner Sousa, this is all in favor. Maintaining the same schedule with one day different or one meeting different. Aaron. Muted. Sorry. Uh, oh, we're doing a, a roll call vote uh, to approve this schedule for the second Thursday of every month for our meetings next year, except for November will be the first Thursday. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Gray. Yes. Commissioner Fox Brown. Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Wing. Yes. Chair Flores. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Any commissioner reports? Okay. How about staff report, Jake? Uh, like I said, I'm fully, fully operational from home now with my VPN and my my monitor, so I'm pretty much available at any time anyone needs me. I don't do anything else or go anywhere else um, like the responsible citizen I am. So uh, <laughs> I will work on the HTC guidelines. I will run our meeting dates up through City Hall and I will get an answer about the virtual meetings. Uh, other than that, uh, stay safe. Hope everyone has a wonderful month of December and wear a mask. Happy holidays. Thanks, Jake. Bye. You too, dear. Bye, okay. We need to make a motion for it to adjourn. Yep, I'll we'll move. Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Sousa, seconded by, I think, Vice Chair Wang. Yes. And roll call. All in no favor. roll call. Aye. Aye. Merry Aye. Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah. Good holidays. Uh, Take enjoy care. Hopefully, some well deserved rest, uh, yeah. all of you. Thank you for all you do. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thank bye. you. Okay. Bye-bye.